Joy Lohan was born in Karamoja, northeastern Uganda, some 50 years ago. Her mother, Norma Hard, was a teacher trainer in northern Uganda, and her father, Brian Hard, was an Anglican church reverend and later became the first bishop of Karamoja. Her parents were from Ireland. When I land in Uganda and I look at my passport, usually the immigration officer looks at my place of birth and he says, are you sure? Between 10 and 15 percent of deliveries need some kind of assistance. Joy's birth was not easy since her mother had obstructed labor. The baby's head was turned the wrong way, so her mother could not easily push her out. She was in labor for over 24 hours. And they cut my mother from this sternum to pubis. I came out alive. Uh, my mother survived. They found a doctor who had once observed a caesarean section but had never performed the procedure. He helped her mother bring forth baby Joy. My mother and my father, who were very poor, but they wrote a letter and they gave some money to this doctor. And he wrote a letter back and returned the money. And he said, it's my job. I was there, this is what I'm meant to do. So to me, that was the most beautiful thing. My mother finds this letter 50 years later. And that is what we need in Uganda, and we need to reward people like that. Like that. <laughs> the circumstances of her birth drove Joy to pursue a career dedicated to saving the lives of mothers and children. She feels strongly about recognizing the work of medical workers. They're paid so little, they work so hard. The least we should do is society should appreciate them. Joy's parents had planned to christen her Elizabeth, but her father read a verse in the Bible from Psalm 30, verse 5. It said, weeping lasts for the night, but joy comes in the morning. <laughs> Morotano is my Karamajong name because I was born in Moroto. What drives her is that under no circumstance should any woman die while giving life when they can be saved. I went into medicine to come back to Africa. I did pediatric studies. I did all the qualifications that I've done because I believe that having more qualifications I would be able to be listened to. Women sometimes aren't listened to. Having sat through it all, praying for his wife and first child to survive the delivery, her father vowed to never undergo that ordeal again if he could help it. When my mother became pregnant for my two younger sisters. Both times my father packed her off to Kampala about six weeks before it was due to deliver. In Uganda, studies show that at least 6,000 women die due to pregnancy-related complications, while 39,000 babies are still born. 34,600 babies die in their first month of life. There aren't enough midwives, uh, there aren't enough doctors. Sometimes, you know, women aren't allowed to give birth in a facility. They aren't enabled to come in. Often women will go into labor in the middle of the night. What is our dialogue about women being allowed to choose when they have their first child? The importance of family planning. A series titled Every Newborn, published in the Lancet Medical Journal last year, presented a study showing how long it would take a baby born in Africa to have the same chance as another born in the UK or the US. It will take 110 years for an African newborn to have the same chance. And as an African, I think that's unacceptable. We should be breastfeeding. We should be washing our hands. We should be doing clean cord care. We need to keep babies warm, especially if they're preterm. Uh, we need antibiotics for when babies get infections. The biggest gap is that what's in policy we aren't implementing, we're not doing it. Uh, and that, I think, will take the voice, and I think especially the voice of women. Joy has a 20-year-old son and a 17-year-old daughter. She would like to see a better health care system in Uganda. The hospital is dirty. We will infect the baby. We will stop people wanting to come in. So I, I think those things aren't even just about money. I think it's also about accountability. Who in that hospital is going around and saying, this is not clean enough. We're not respecting people who are coming in. Every year, 1.2 million women go into labor across the world with a live baby, but the baby dies during birth. Joy says in almost every case, a weak health system is a key factor for the deaths, and most of these happen in Africa. If that was, you know, that Europe or North America, the doctor would be sued, the midwife would be sued, and the hospital would be sued. What do we do in Africa? We blame the woman, the very last person who should be blamed. She has just completed reading a book, Lean In, written by Sheryl Sandberg, the CEO of Facebook. She feels this book has a lesson to teach every woman.
There are two things. There's what society does that puts women down or keeps women quiet. There's also what we allow to be done to ourselves. And that's the bit we can change. As a bishop, Joy's father worked under the late Archbishop Chenan Luwum. After Luwum's murder in 1977, the then army commander, a Muslim, was ordered to kill her father. He refused and fled. A brave policeman arrested my father really for his own safety and managed to drive him uh, up to Kampala and get him deported uh, for spying offences. Her mother was given just a week to pack up and leave the country. Joy was then in school in Kenya. She and her siblings were homeschooled in their early years, but she was sent to boarding school in Kenya when she was about seven years old. Her parting shot is for women to stand up and speak up, whatever the circumstances. On your gravestone, somebody will not say, you know, she, she was quiet is not to be proud of if you were so quiet that you didn't speak up for the woman next to you, for your sister who needed you to speak up. Josephine Karunji, NTV.